Hello, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to do uh, stoichiometry calculations. Specifically, we're going to solve a limiting reagent problem. So, what are limiting and excess reagents? A limiting reagent is a reactant that limits the amount of products that can be made because it gets completely used up in a reaction. The excess reagent is the reactant that is not used up completely, so there's more than enough of it, and you end up with leftover reactant. Now, there are some steps that are helpful in uh, calculating the limiting and excess reagents. So first, you're going to set up two problems, and they're often mass-to-mass -mass problems. The one we'll solve today is a mass-to-mass. So the thing that's different about these from ones we've done previously is instead of getting one reactant amount, you're given two reactant amounts. So you're going to have to set up two problems and determine how much you can make from each of the amounts that you were given. So you're going to determine how many grams or moles of product that you can make from each reactant. And you're going to compare the two. Whichever one makes less that's the most you're going to be able to make. And then the reactant that makes less product is what we call the limiting reagent. It's going to limit how much can be made, and that's the one that's going to be used completely. The other reactant is the so-called excess reagent, and it's called that because there's more than enough of it. So there's leftover. And the most product that you can make is always the lesser amount. And if you think about my analogy that I like to use where we're making a grilled cheese sandwich, if you have less cheese, then you have bread to make sandwiches. Once you run out of cheese, it pretty much stops being a cheese sandwich. So our example is going to be the reaction of carbon plus oxygen to make carbon dioxide. And the problem goes like this. If you have 35 grams of oxygen and it's going to react with 55 grams of carbon, what mass of carbon dioxide is produced? What is the limiting reagent and what is the excess reagent? So I'm just going to start with our molar mass boxes because we're going to be asked for how many grams of carbon dioxide. So we're going to start with grams of oxygen. So our molar mass box for oxygen, oxygen is a diatomic molecule, so 2 times oxygen is 2 times 16, so the molar mass there would be 32.00. And for carbon dioxide, 1 times carbon is 12.01, 2 times oxygen is 32, so molar mass there is 44.01. So now the setup. We're going to start with the carbon, and we're going to calculate how much carbon dioxide will be produced. So we're going from the first reactant to how much product we can make. So we started with 55.0 grams of carbon, and now we have to use molar mass to get from grams of carbon to moles of carbon. And there's our molar mass. And then notice um, that the grams of carbon was in the numerator in our given, so that means in our conversion fact we need to put it in the denominator so it cancels out. Now we're at moles of carbon and we need to use the mole ratio in order to get two moles of carbon dioxide, and you'll see there's a one to one ratio for every one mole of carbon you'll get one mole of carbon dioxide. So notice when we set up our mole ratio we want the unit that we want, moles of carbon dioxide in the numerator, and the unit that we're getting rid of, moles of carbon in the denominator. Now we're ready to go from moles of carbon dioxide to grams of carbon dioxide. That means we have to use molar mass, and we calculated that molar mass for carbon dioxide is 44.01 grams per mole. So now we're going to notice that grams and grams of carbon cancels out, moles of carbon, moles of carbon cancels out, moles of carbon dioxide, moles of carbon dioxide, cancels out, we're going to be left with grams of carbon dioxide. We're going to plug that into our calculator, so 55.0 grams divided by 12.01 times 1 times 44.01, and our answer is 201.5 grams of carbon dioxide. 
Now we have to see how much carbon dioxide we can produce from the oxygen we were given. So we started with 35 grams of oxygen. In order to go from grams to moles of oxygen, we need to multiply by molar mass. Noticing again that we have moles of oxygen in the numerator so that we end up with moles of oxygen and grams of oxygen in the denominator so it cancels out. Now we're at moles of oxygen. We need to use the mole ratio to get to moles of carbon dioxide. And it also is a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So you get one mole of carbon dioxide for every one mole of oxygen. Notice that what we want is in the numerator and what we're getting rid of is in the denominator. Now we're at moles of carbon dioxide. We need to multiply by the molar mass, 44.01 grams per mole. So we can get from moles of CO2 to grams of CO2. And again, plugging in your calculator, it's going to be 35 divided by 32 times 1 times 44.01. And that gives us 48.1 grams of carbon dioxide. So notice here that from the carbon, we could make 201 grams of carbon dioxide, but from the oxygen, we can only make 48.1 grams. Therefore, the most that we can make is 48.1 grams because that's the lesser of the two amounts. So we know that oxygen is limiting and the reaction can only yield 48.1 grams of carbon dioxide. That would be what we would refer to as the theoretical yield. That also means that carbon is the excess reagent. There will be leftover carbon. So how much excess reagent is left? There are steps to determine how much excess reagent is left. First thing you're going to do is set up a mass-to-mass -mass problem, but this time, instead of going to product, you're going to set it up between the two reactants. And then you're going to calculate how many grams of the excess reagent is used when all of the limiting reagent gets used. And finally, you'll subtract the amount of the excess reagent that you calculated that was used from the amount that you started with at the beginning of the problem. That amount will be the excess of that reagent. So let's calculate it. Going back again, our same equation, how much of the carbon is used when all of the oxygen is consumed. So we know that all 35 grams of the oxygen will be used. So we have to go from grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. And then we're going to go from moles of oxygen to moles of carbon. So notice here the mole ratio is between carbon and oxygen. We're trying to determine how much carbon is used. So carbon needs to be in the numerator and moles of oxygen in the denominator so they cancel out. And then finally, to figure out how many grams of carbon that was used, we need to multiply by carbon's molar mass, which is 12.01 grams per mole. So 35 divided by 32 times 12 equals 13.1 gram of carbon. So that means that when we use up all of the oxygen, 13.1 grams of carbon will also be used. Next, we can calculate how much carbon is left by subtracting from what was used. So we began with 55 grams of carbon. That was our given. We used 13.1 grams. That's what we just calculated here, which means that there are 41.9 grams of carbon that are excess. So 41.9 grams of carbon is left excess after all of the oxygen is consumed. So in this problem, 48.1 grams of carbon dioxide is produced. Oxygen is the limiting reagent and is completely used up. Carbon is the excess reagent. And 41.9 grams of carbon is left as excess reagent. So I hope that this um, tutorial helped you work through these problems. Um, I will be recording more soon. So stay tuned for the next tutorial video. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.